I have a problem. A friend recently asked me to refinish her left-handed wooden spatula, apparently those exist, so instead of sending it to the landfill and tracking down a new one, I'm going to take a crack at fixing it. The original finish has completely worn off and the wood has started to get really spongy and fuzzy, it's, it's really in bad shape. Now my problem is that this spatula will be used every single day. It'll be in boiling water, it'll be scraped on hot pans, and on top of that, it still needs to be food safe. So, what kind of wood finish can withstand lots of heat, lots of moisture, and be food safe all at the same time? The answer, not that many. So, I am going to do a few torture tests on some well-known finishes to see how they hold up. So there's a lot of terminology for finishes out there and I want to clarify some of these terms before diving in. So the word solvent encaptures a large range of chemical mixtures, mostly petroleum based and used to dissolve finishes and sometimes used as thinners, um, generally not food safe. Varnishes are slow drying sealants made of resins, oils and solvents, not generally food safe as well because they contain solvents. Sealants main job is to repel moisture. Again, most are not food safe. And then we have wax, which is typically made of natural materials. Think beeswax, carnauba wax. Uh, it helps to even out the sheen and add some protection to the wood. However, wax constantly has to be reapplied and does not create a very durable finish. And then oil seeps into the wood and penetrates the actual wood fibers. Uh, generally can't be built up as a finish or a sealant might be. It preserves the wood, but does not seal the wood. It's generally food safe and they, it constantly needs to be reapplied. So the big issue is that durable finishes are generally not considered food safe and naturally made food safe finishes are generally not durable. And we're looking for something that does both. So I've gathered my A team of wood finishes and we are gonna see what works best. First, we've got shellac. It's a finish and a sealer and is made from these little bugs. I also grabbed this spray shellac, but after reading the ingredients, we're gonna pass on this one unless acetone and petroleum gas sounds appetizing. Now walrus oil. I have not actually used this stuff before, so I'm really excited to try it out. It contains lots of wax and oils, so we'll see what happens. Mineral oil, good for cutting boards, not necessarily good for heat, so we'll see what happens there. Howard's wax it all. I've used this stuff on a couple times before and I really like it, but I don't think the wax is gonna hold up in the heat. Raw linseed, if it's boiled linseed, it is not food safe. And tongue oil, this stuff is kind of weird in that it's an oil, but it seals really well for moisture. And from what I've researched, it can stand some heat too. It's a natural finish made from the nuts of the tongue tree. And for a bonus, we have d -limonene. It's a natural solvent, which is really bizarre, made from orange peels. You can use it to dilute a finish and help it to penetrate the wood fibers. I've got a few sample pieces of cherry that I'm going to be using. I'm sanding these down to 150 grit just to help level the playing field. Then I'm going to label each one just so I have a reference of which one is which. We're starting out with Howard's Wax It All Wax. I love this stuff, but I don't think it's going to be able to stand up to the heat of the frying pan. This stuff goes on really thick and is really fun to put on on a lid. Next we have mineral oil, and again, this protects the wood, but it doesn't necessarily seal the wood, so I don't know how well this is gonna fare. I also don't want my friend to have to reapply this stuff every month or so, so I think this is just a no-go from the start, but we'll see. Next is walrus oil. It does not contain real walrus, but it does contain coconut oil, beeswax, and mineral oil, and vitamin E. It really has that coconut oil uh, texture, which is really weird for a finish to have this kind of texture, but uh, let's go with it. Next up is shellac. This stuff kind of smells like apple cider to me, but maybe that's just me and the winter vibes are kicking in. Next is linseed oil, which apparently is made from flax seeds, which I did not know. Next, tongue oil, which doesn't smell that great. Tongue oil takes a bunch of coats and lots of curing time, but once it's dry, it creates a sealed exterior layer, which I think is what we're looking for. Also, if you use it before it's cured, uh, it is not food safe. It has the consistency of like honey or something, which really helps it to create that exterior layer of seal, 
Um, however, it doesn't do that well as far as like a penetrating oil. So what I'm going to do is add some D-limonene to it and mix it about 50-50. You know, no real scientific measurements here. Just kind of pour one and pour the other and mix them up a little bit. And I'm going to use that as my eighth sample. And then finally, I used the spray shellac. And as I mentioned, it is not food safe. I looked at the back of the can after I sprayed this and realized that it had way too much nasty stuff in it to even think about ingesting. Off screen, I added additional coats per instructions per each finish. Now that we have them all cured, it's time for some torture testing. And I was told to ruin a pot from Goodwill instead of our nice set of pots that we eat food out of. And for our first test, we are going to be boiling these wood scraps for about 20 minutes, full boil. I used some bowl clips to keep them in place and half submerged so that we can compare them to what they looked like before. After 20 minutes, you can tell the color of the water has significantly changed, which means that we will definitely have some failures out of this bunch. And be sure to stick around. I added a bonus test near the end that no one else is doing, and it really helps to visualize which finishes are winners. So right now, we're looking pretty, pretty messed up on a lot of these. This first one is the control. Uh, definitely some water damage and the bowl clip actually the paint melted on this one number two did not fare too well you can see the water line near the top number three did okay uh, it, but it did there was some major swelling with most of these where it was submerged number four had some discoloration and a decent water line number five completely discolored um, number six didn't do too bad actually. Color stayed relatively consistent and there's no water line, not too bad. Then number seven and eight did really well. They definitely won this round. That's the tongue oil. There's no swelling, minimal color change, and absolutely no water line. It just means the tongue oil definitely helped with protecting the wood and is still intact after being boiled alive unlike a lot of these samples. Moving on to torture test number two. I'm using vegetable oil to fry up these wood samples and keeping them vertical so that we can see any burn on the bottom and any oil absorptance. And I put these on high heat for about three minutes. Uh, you can already see the oil starting to <laughs> just bubble and burn. I would have kept them in longer but the oil did start to smoke. We definitely have a few burnt samples. I have them organized from left to right, one being top left, eight being bottom right. And again, the tongue oil samples, number seven and eight, seem to have done very well. Minimal burn and less color changing. For test number three, I'm doing a scrape test in the hot oil. Honestly, this test did not really tell me much and my results were pretty inconclusive. I didn't notice much damage to any of the samples really. And if y'all have any ideas on how to better test this scrape ability, let me know in the comments. You can definitely start to see some wear on all of these samples now after being put in the oil and once again numbers one through six really didn't stand up to the tongue oil. The tongue oil is definitely stained but not as much as the other ones. The other sample that did okay was number five which is the shellac. Everything else was really burnt to a crisp or absorbed a ton of oil. And next I am going to do an absorptance test. I let all of the samples dry and dropped two drops of water on each piece. One where we've been doing all the testing and the other in the non-test zone. After about five minutes, you could definitely tell that a few of the samples were completely letting the water in, while other samples, the water stayed on the wood and did not absorb. After about five minutes or so, I pulled out some of the failures, number three, number five, and number six, which are mineral oil, shellac, and linseed, all absorbed really quickly, which means the finish had completely worn off and is not doing its job. And then I let the other five that had not failed sit for another 10 minutes or so until we did get some other failures. Now, something really weird happened in that number one, which is our control and did not have any finish on it whatsoever, definitely didn't absorb that, that much water. I think it was so waterlogged by the other test that it didn't have time to fully dry. Number four uh, kind of failed as well. Number two actually stayed in the running uh, and number seven and eight did pretty well as well. Next, I'm just gonna check square real quick. Uh, these are end grain heavy samples and they are different thicknesses and some have small knots. So the results can definitely vary based on all of those factors. So I'm really not putting a lot of weight into the success of this. But it does show that pretty much every sample had some kind of warping. Even the tongue oil samples had deformed. The only one that really stayed straight for whatever reason 
was the shellac number five. And again, it just might be that it was a slightly thicker sample than the rest. Over the course of these tests, I'm definitely seeing that the sample that I finished with tongue and D-limonene is performing slightly less better than the tongue oil. I think the D-limonene is really thinning out the seal of the tongue oil and letting more bad stuff in. I do still see the value of adding the D-limonene for at least the first coat to help the tongue oil penetrate into the wood fibers better. But I think for the final finish, I'll end up coating it with 100% tongue oil to help make that seal even better. I think it's pretty clear so far that the tongue oil will be our champion, but I do have one more test, so we will see. Just gonna take a minute to look at all our samples so far. This is the control, so it's obviously damaged a lot. Number two, which is Howard's Wax It All, has a definite waterline and a lot of discoloration from the oil. Mineral oil definitely has a lot of burn. I think it got really sizzled. Um, number four, Walrus Oil, has a waterline and some uh, oil shellac didn't do too bad it's got some oil stains and it didn't do well in the boil but other than that it didn't do bad the linseed also did pretty well but it did get burnt pretty well and one thing really cool about the tongue oil is you can still see a little bit of a sheen from the finish um, which is a really good sign and just a close-up shot of all of the edges from one to eight from left to right but hold on just wait a minute we have one more final torture test that is the food coloring test. Now, I haven't seen anyone else do this test, but I think the results really speak for themselves. I didn't believe it at first, but the tongue oil sample completely withstood this test. Literally all of the food coloring washed away unlike any of the other samples. And just to show you, this finish is still there. A lot of these samples, the dye actually uh, went through the entire wood since it's the end grain. The walrus oil, the shellac, the uh, tongue, and both tongue oils were the only four samples that the dye didn't go all the way through. Of course, I had to make a quick tally with all of our tests, giving uh, each test a range from 0 to 10 with a max score of 50. The scrape test, I just gave everyone a 5 since it was kind of inconclusive. Both tongue oil samples clearly outshone the rest with walrus oil coming in third and shellac close behind. So give it up to tongue oil. Just look how happy these little tongue nuts are. Way to go, guys. But that is not the end of this video because tongue oil is a very tricky time intensive finish to get right. And if you don't follow the instructions, you can get a inferior finish that does not seal properly. First, I'm going to sand this left-handed spoon down, starting at 150 grit, then 200, moving to 400, then 1000 wet. Now, 1000 is probably just overkill, but I love how smooth it gets. And note to self, keep the sanded spoon away from ink. Now I have to re-sand to get that magenta out. Now, please roast me in the comments for this crappy finish stand. I wanted something that holds the spoon while it dries. This is probably my best work. Time to whip out the tongue oil. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna do one coat with 50-50 tongue oil and D-limonene, a natural solvent that thins out the tongue oil and helps it to penetrate the wood. Then I'm gonna come back with additional coats of just pure tongue oil. Don't ever buy anything that doesn't say 100% pure tongue oil because a lot of times companies will falsely advertise and say it is tongue oil when it is really tongue oil with non-food safe additives. So next four coats of pure tongue oil spaced 24 hours apart. And after an hour of applying, I wipe off any excess to avoid the coat uh, building up unevenly. It is looking so good so far. Tongue oil gives your wood a really nice natural matte finish. It doesn't have that plastic sheen that like a poly or like an epoxy would have. Before the final coat, I'm just gonna hit it with a thousand grit sandpaper just to smooth it out a little bit and then go over it one more time with the tongue oil for a total of six layers. I'm gonna put this last layer of tongue oil on very thinly just to cover up anywhere where I might have sanded a little bit too much. And that should do it. Now, the weird thing about tongue oil is that in order for it to be food safe, it has to sit for 30 days to cure and seal, which is a long time, but it's totally worth it. Also, in a dark location is preferable. Now, did somebody say B-roll? Thirty days later, and I am loving this finish. Now, let's see what our friend thinks of it, since it is hers. Her and throwing up. <laughs> yes. Okay, here. Perfect. I'm gonna say a bunch of stuff yeah, while Brad's editing. Thing. He can yes. deal with that. <laughs> wow. Do I? So the stirring capacity is pretty great. What's cool is like 
it gets rid of the, the water. Like, it's like, I don't want to be on here. It's a great finish. <laughs> And I wish I had my phone so I could start playing copyright music. What? <laughs> I think it's safe to say that she loved it. Now, if you liked this video, hit subscribe to see some more. Thanks for watching.